again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and may I add my congratulations to yours, to Mr. Alan Ainsworth, for his arduous endeavors with the boys and that positively frenetic flourish of his frenzied little weapon. In the festive interlude, we celebrate, ladies and gentlemen, yes, madam, there you are. Now, isn't that nice? That's charming. And to you, my darling, there. We celebrate tonight, and already I have a little gift, we celebrate the feast of Stephen, and tonight we have a particular celebrant, an anniversary celebrant with us, whom I'm sure you will wish to cheer. Ken Frith, ladies and gentlemen, our pianist tonight, celebrates his birthday. Ken! <laughs> gentlemen, and I hope that goes for those among you tonight who also are celebrating anniversaries of one kind or another. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we open the second part of our program with a return to this hall, to this program, of two artists who have delight us, delighted us in the past with their, with, ladies and gentlemen, their scintillant synthesis of, oh, of no. simultaneous Synchronization, ladies and gentlemen, the Manton Brothers. you ladies and gentlemen for the warmth of your applause that you will have the Manton Brothers once again later on in the program. I should like to say to the lady in the enchanting broderie anglaise jabot. I don't mean that that's I don't mean that that's all she's wearing. Um, that the boys are maybe not brothers but from the same stable. Um, you notice that even even the gleam on the teeth synchronizes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have very much pleasure in introducing to this program in a positive fanfaronade of fun and frolic from the lunatic fringe, Smoothie and Layton. I 
don't mind being here alone as long as I'm alone with you. You're the kind I've tried hard to find. You've made all my dreams come true. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm terribly sorry. I do sincerely hope you'll forgive me. <clears throat> Goodness knows what it was, but I must admit to you that I am feeling a little nervous, a little excited, a little carried away this evening. There is, of course, a very good reason for this. And... <laughs> Bless you, sir. I, I, there's a good reason for this, and everybody backstage, all the boys and girls in the show, have dared me to come out and let you wonderful people into the secret. Well, it's purely and simply this, that just a few moments ago, Mr. Pitt Paulson, our manager, rushed around the back to inform me that they received a message to the effect that my wife, bless her heart, has presented me with a bundle of joy. <laughs> The laundry came back. <laughs> Thank you, Maestro, and the... Ooh, you should have seen your faces. <laughs> Especially Auntie Fanny down there. Ooh. Smoothie, what are you doing here? Hello. Hello, indeed. Well, I just popped... <laughs> what? I just popped out to sing a song and tell all these nice people about the wife. Have you told them? Yes, sir. We've just popped back again. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, in my capacity as professor of music, I would like if just I may this evening... Just a moment, just a moment. Sir, did you say you were a professor? Indeed I did, yes. Oh, good. Well, look, professor, um, Mummy Bear had a baby bear, but Baby Bear had no hair. What'd they call him? What did they call him? Fred Bear. <laughs> if I can just have your indulgence... I think... The whole... Two bishops going to bed. Which one wears a nightdress? I don't know. Mrs. Bishop Simmons. <laughs> Disregarding I the... Don't... What is the matter? Do you know I don't know? No. No, honestly, I don't know. Well, it's enough, huh? Passing swiftly on. Ah, sir, gentlemen. before you pass on, um... What? <laughs> What's the difference between a cemetery and a bathroom? What is the difference between a cemetery and a bathroom? Nothing. When you've got to go, you've got to go. <laughs> I thank you for your indulgence, ladies and gentlemen. We'll I pass swiftly on to something which I feel... The ma the manager said if I behaved myself this evening, I could do me Shakespeare bit. Shakespeare bit? Yes, sir. What do you know about Shakespeare? He's dead. <laughs> really? You really want to do some Shakespeare? Yes, sir. Sir Lawrence. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on rather rather auspicious occasion, I would like to do Richard the Third. <laughs> did my ears deceive me, or did I hear sniggering among you? <laughs> Why do you snigger? I was informed on very good authority. You appreciate the arts. Richard the Third. No, best of luck. <laughs> he sat. <laughs> he sat in the sheltered seat one night upon a cigarette, a light. Shakespeare? Burns. <laughs> Thank you again for your patience. We'll hey, swing into my first a... number now. Sir, sir, where'd you get that from? Give us a go. Give us a go. What do you know about music? My neighbour, Mrs. Stanthorpe, plays the fiddle and the flute. <laughs> plays the what? The fiddle and the flute. <laughs> well, who wants to hear the fiddle and the flute? <laughs> the fiddle and the flute what? <laughs> <laughs> do you mean to tell me a man of your position can't... <laughs> I possibly could if I forced myself. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Professor. What? What's the difference between... And... I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you again for your forbearance. My first number is... Give me a go of your thing. Give me a go of your thing. Your shiny thing. If it is this to which you are referring, what you should say is excuse me, old boy. What have you done? <laughs> I haven't done anything. Oh. I am teaching you to enunciate. Is it painful? Yeah. No. Well, give me a go of your thing, then. I take it, have a go. Go on, you hope. Thank you. Where's the other bit? Other bit? What other bit? The other part. What other part? Ladies and gentlemen, the professor says, what other part? The bow. <laughs> You don't need a bow with that instrument. You blow it with your mouth. You don't. You do. Oh. Right now, do you blow the trumpet voluntary? Hmm? I said, do you blow the trumpet voluntary? Oh, no, I charge a few, Bob. <laughs> I don't mean that. What are you going to blow? What are you going to blow of? <laughs> to blow of? Correct. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it really does give me fight with great pleasure. To be in the position to blow of for you this evening. <laughs> the New World Symphony, opus number one, and we hope as how you like it. It's in G sharp minor. <laughs> there are variations on the theme in E flat for left handed foghorn. <laughs> and the piece is by Shostakovich. Thank you. You're going to blow what? That's what I'm going to blow in. What comes help, I know nothing about. <laughs> I am glad you brought that up. Aren't we all? <clears throat> <laughs> Talent in the land. Ladies and gentlemen, now, here's a little number we can all get our teeth in. What do you say we hear each and every voice? Thank you. Everybody now. Let's see what we can do. And you know, you know. All together now. Oh, you beautiful doll. That's it. You great, great, beautiful doll. season, young Patricia Breeden brought the fragrance of spring to warm our wintry hearts. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, fresh from her triumphs in the sphere of tableau vivant, Whoa. moving pictures, my dear. <laughs> Miss Breeden comes, as I'm sure our own beloved Poet Laureate would have said, clothed in white samite, <laughs> mystic, wonderful, Patricia Breeden. When I was a child at my mom. 
mother's knee. My mother sang words of wisdom to me. She warned me of dangers down in the wood, for not every stranger is kindly and good. Till the right time comes, never fall for romantic illusion, for it's all a snare and delusion. Till the right time comes. At school I soon learned that boys carry books for cute little girls with pretty good looks. Those school day romances thrilled me, but yet I never took chances I might regret. At sweet seventeen, you learn very soon the lies men can tell when under the moon, when soft words are spoken, wisdom departs. Those same words have broken so many hearts. Till the right time comes, never fall for romantic illusion, for it's all a snare and delusion. Till the right time comes, what girl doesn't yearn for big city lights? The butterfly days and glamorous nights But when men start winking, though it seems nice It's safer to think of mother's advice Though time hurries by, I patiently wait For love will arrive before it's too late No changing for new loves, no false alarms I'll wait till my true love's here in my arms. Till the right time comes, never fall for romantic illusion. For it's all a snare and illusion. Till the right time comes, till the right time Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to interrupt this charming performance, but we do feel that as this hall has been positively hallowed as a temple of veneration for Aphrodite by Mr. Harry Joseph, I should ask Miss Breeden for you all to oblige. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, what am I doing? I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I am sorry. I nearly forgot myself. Um, our next artist is new to this particular program, but not new to your hearts, ladies and gentlemen, and he has, he informs me, and I know, several times before, tickled your risibilities. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight he comes to this particular program with the act with which he first burst on an astonished world several years ago at the Corn Exchange in Newark. Ladies and gentlemen, we give you Cardew, the cad of the school. Hello, Jack. Do you like the scarf? <laughs> I've got a long one of this, but it looks silly. <laughs> that reminds me. You will see by my scarf, you will see by my hat, I belong to an old public school. But my bat is not straight, and I don't play the game, and I think that a sportsman's a fool. So have no illusions that I'm what I'm not. I'll tell you right now that I'm bad. My name's not Carruthers, or Carstairs, or Craig. I'm called you the old school cad. Who played manly games and of cricket was fond? Not card you the cad of the school. Who behind the pavilion played games with a blonde? That was Card who the cat of the school. <laughs> when sports day came round and the school took the track, who down by the river stretched out on a mac read a dirty French book with a bright yellow back? <laughs> Card who the cat of the school. <laughs> who thought that the school fancy dress dance was stupid? Card who the cat of the school. Who took all his clothes off and turned up as Cupid? <laughs> Card who the cat of the school. Who cut the sports photographs out with a knife and stuck in the frames real art studies from life? <laughs> Who was caught in the grounds of the headmaster's wife? Card you, the cat of the school. <laughs> Who flogged the darts cup to his lasting disgrace? Card you, the cat of the school. A bedroom utensil was stuck in its place. <laughs> By card you, the cat of the school. Who climbed up the flagstaff when no one was there, took down the school flag and left high in the air an intimate portion of feminine wear? The <laughs> card who the cat of the school. <laughs> and I love the old school, dear old St. Fanny's. <laughs> Divided into three houses cook house, wash house, and doss house. <laughs> there had been a fourth house, but it was burnt down. <laughs> Slaughterhouse. <laughs> beautiful school, beautiful school, lovely situation. Stands in a natural basin. My room's just over the plug hole. <laughs> over the school door is a school crest, lovely crest, two brass monkeys in fur coats. <laughs> when, you are, when you went to the school, you might meet the headmaster, Dr. Jankers, BA, BO, BF. <laughs> Remarkable man, speaks three languages, English, Yiddish, and rubbish. <laughs> Very much loved by the school, only last week he was presented with an illuminated address. They set fire to his house. <laughs> I should never forget the first time I met the headmaster. I walked into his study. He was standing with his back to the fire, airing his knowledge. <laughs> he turned round, he told me everything a boy should know, all about the birds and the flowers. <laughs> Oh, it was marvellous. When I get a bit older, I'm hoping to marry a nice geranium. <laughs> Matter of fact, we just had the school exams. I got into awful trouble in geography. They asked me to give three uses of the Pennine chain. I can only think of one. <laughs> For my bicycle. <laughs> Matter of fact, I, I've got my report here, and I'd like to read my report to you if I can find it. That's tonight's homework. <laughs> <laughs> That's last night's homework. I think I've left it behind, I think. Yes, here it is. <clears throat> here we are. <clears throat> My report. English, broken. <laughs> History, murky. <laughs> Language, filthy. <laughs> Conduct, well up to criminal standard. 
Position in form 12, number in form 11. <laughs> form master's remarks has retained his position with ease. <laughs> Headmaster's remarks, this boy should go a long way. And the sooner the better. <laughs> Never mind, it's not all work at St. Fanny's. Not all work. I love the long summer evenings in the school quadrangle. That's Latin for backyard. <laughs> Nothing to be heard but some young, fresh, studious voice remarking, you can't stick on 15. <laughs> While that went on, I sat in a corner making notes, 10 shilling notes, pound notes. But best of all, best of all, the thing I love most about the school is the fact that it's so historic. You take the headmaster, please. <laughs> the headmaster's own bed was slept in by King Henry VIII. And to this very day, you can still see the round mark on the bedside carpet where he used to keep his crown. <laughs> As for me, I always do my best to live up to the school motto, the old English motto which dates back to the early 12th century. It troubleth me not what happeneth to thee, Jack. I am all right. <laughs> my crowning exploit took place on the occasion of the school tiddlywinks championship. I was drawn against the headmaster's daughter, and at the crucial moment, I tiddled when I should have winked. <laughs> <laughs> the end of my shocking career, the end of my shocking career, lies in the answer to this question. Who mixed dynamite in the chemistry class? Cardew, the cat of the school. And at last left the school through a large pane of glass. Cardew, and some of the school. <laughs> Who, though he could never obtain a degree, was as crafty and cunning as cunning could be, and will end up, no doubt, a successful MP. Can you the can? gentlemen, as the cognoscenti among you will know, our sovereign has arranged a state visit from France for the new year, and we in this programme follow humbly in the regal footsteps in bringing our next artiste from Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, we present very proudly Grock's nephew, the, the illustrious nephew of a peerless clown, Noberti! <laughs>
gentlemen, not to put too fine a physiological point on it, we can congratulate Noberti on swivelling on his own apex. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we go once again 
abroad and we bring you in all the proud plenitude of her of her palpitating pulchritude we give you la senorita betty jumel <laughs> Yeah, now we find great time that these the night time. 
I think, I think Mr. Ainsworth and the boys will agree with me that that was very busy. And now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, we redeem a pledge and give you once again the Manton Brothers. Ladies and gentlemen, to send you home happy for our final item tonight, we reach to the top of the Christmas tree and we give you, ladies and gentlemen, two artists who need no gloss from me. Ladies and gentlemen, in all pride, we present Morecambe and Wyatt. Thank you, thank you. Thank Who's you. come on? I don't know. Oh, it's on. <laughs> Good evening. Hello. Hello. Working? Oh, you're up there, aren't you? <laughs> don't work up that way. The wife. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I must say how happy we are to be appearing once again at the City Varieties Leeds. Yes. It really is wonderful to see all your happy, smiling faces. Happy, smiling faces. <laughs> As a matter of fact, the old place hasn't changed one little bit. But don't you feel that there's something missing? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> However, it's exciting in the theatre. The lights, the atmosphere. Is that what it is? Yes. I thought it was you. you oh. well, I'm getting a bit. I'm going to be fed up with this stage, lad. Fed up with it? Well, I like to do something different, you know, like go abroad, get a new job. Where was that woman there when she was doing all that dancing? Where was she? I've got it. What? Spain. Is that where she was? Yes. That's where I'd like to go. Well, it's hot. Yeah, that's the place for you. Why? Listen, you would make a marvellous bullfighter. <laughs> yeah, you're a natural. Listen, I'm going to make you the greatest bullfighter in the world. You're only saying that. No, I'm not. Well, somebody just did. Eh? <laughs> Now we've got to dress you for the part. I mean, you must look right. A right what? <laughs> a right bullfighter. 
Now you're wearing a sweet corner hat. What for? A sweet corner hat. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I thought it was funny. So happens I have a three cornered head. <laughs> now, where do you get these hats? <laughs> You're wearing a blue velvet jacket. Pardon? <laughs> You're wearing a blue velvet jacket with a ruffle collar, a spangled shirt with broidery on gray cuffs, bright yellow pantaloons. Snug fitting. <laughs> White stockings and the most heavenly pair of black patent shoes. Yeah. Now, what do you say to that? I won't have to say anything. <laughs> Dressed like that, I think everybody will know. <laughs> what are you going to call yourself? How about Elsie? Are you... No! <laughs> Choose a name, a bullfighting name. Arterial D. Rodriguez Licorice. Licorice? Licorice. That's not a name. Spanish, isn't it? <laughs> Do I have to fight the bull? Fight the bull? Yeah. Not right away. Oh. I mean, have you ever faced a bull? I came face to face with a ferocious bull once. Did they give you a start? I didn't need one. I was off like lightning. <laughs> oh. Now comes the great day. The arena is packed to capacity. Is it full? Yeah, of course. Is it full? <laughs> the people are all waiting for the greatest bullfighter in all Spain. Ah, well, he won't need me now. I can go then. It's, <laughs> it's you they are waiting for. Is it? I can see you now standing in the center of the bullring. Yes. All eyes are focused on you. They are all waiting for you to do something. <laughs> we won't have to wait very long then, will we? Definitely. <laughs> Definitely not, because they know. They know that you are a man of action. An action's a bit louder than the words, don't yeah. they? <laughs> <laughs> it's a happy show, isn't it? <laughs> now suddenly, at one end of the arena, there is a little cloud of dust as the bull rushes in. And at the other end of the arena, there's an even bigger cloud of dust as I rush out. <laughs> Followed by Jimmy and Ben. <laughs> you're, you're not afraid, are you? Afraid? Afraid. Yes. You are? You are? Yes. What a magnificent animal that is. Just look at it. There it is, over there. Oh, my God, it's quick, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what is it now? Sat in that seat. Sitting bull. <laughs> He's asleep. Asleep? It's a bulldozer. Thank you. <laughs> Do you realize that bull weighs over two tons? That's a lot of bull, isn't it? <laughs> now comes your supreme moment. A faint. No. No. The moment for the kill. Uh, oh. Just you and the bull alone in the arena. <laughs> Hule! You have me worried there. <laughs> <laughs> Hule! Hule! Congratulations. What have I done? You have just killed that bull with one master stroke. Thank you. A magnificent effort. I'm very proud of you. I'm quick, aren't I? Oh, yes, very right quick. Then. Poor old bull. <laughs> you forgot that bit, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> What's that? I said you forgot that bit. No, no. Oh. Up there. What? In the box. Can you see him? No. It's, it is. Is it? Yes. It's the president of the bullring. <laughs> Can he get down? Yeah, he doesn't want to. <laughs> Do you know what he's done? He hasn't, has he? Yes. <laughs> he has awarded you the ear of the bull. <laughs> oh, this is indeed a great honor. You must thank him in the old Spanish way. Much gracias, senor. Much gracias. He's having a go, isn't he? Much gracias, senor. What about the workers? <laughs> Quanta la gusta! Charlie Chaplin! <laughs> Viva Zapata! With chips! <laughs> hey, what? 
Why? Who's working you? <laughs> now you walk towards the president's box and you throw the ear of the ball to the president's beautiful daughter. She accepts it. I'm glad because I wouldn't know what to do with it. <laughs> she looks down at you and smiles and says... I know what she says. What does she say? Hello, hello, hello. What's his ear? Slaybells <laughs> <laughs> ring. Are you listening? Down the lane. Snow is listening. A beautiful sight. We're happy tonight. A walking in the winter wonderland. Gone away is the bluebird. Here to stay is the new bird. He sings a love song as you go along, a walking in the winter on the land. In the meadow you can see the snowman. They pretend that he is Parson Brown. He'll say, Are you married? You'll say, No, man. But you can do the job when you're in town. Later on, we'll conspire as we dream by the fire. To face out of frame the plans that you made for walking in the winter wonderland into the dance. Gentlemen, before we send you out to illuminated leads, and I, and I mean lit up, we're going to ask Messrs. Morkman Wise to lead the company and yourselves in the old bull and bush. Ladies and gentlemen, Morkman and Wise, the entire company, but this time, chiefly yourselves!